Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this video is going to be a, a two-part video. So I was gonna do one whole video, but then I decided that I wanted to do, well, I'll tell you first what the video is, then I'll tell you why. So this first part of it is going to be an amazing recipe that I discovered on Pinterest, and I made it last night for dinner, and you guys, it is out of this world. It tastes way too good to be the amount of smart points that it is. Way too good. So definitely you have to try this recipe so the first part of this rest this first part of this video that's what's going to be it's going to be this um this recipe then in the second part of the video i am going to show you how you can repurpose that and use the leftovers to make something else that would be great for a lunch or maybe even a dinner whatever you like i will be personally using it for a lunch so stay tuned for that second part because you guys know Here's the thing about leftovers. You either, you love leftovers, you don't like leftovers, or you would prefer them to be kind of different in a way. And that's kind of how I am. Now I will eat like soups and stews and things like that, you know, for lunch the next day. But I, I am just, if you guys know, if you've been watching me a while, you know I like a wide variety of food. So I am not one to just eat the same meal every day. I wish I could because it'd be so much better on the budget, but I get so tired of it. And I tend to, okay, I'm just gonna go pick up Subway, which is, you know, going to kill my budget. So, um, so anyway, I want to try to find ways to repurpose food to where it's still leftovers, but you don't feel like you're eating the same thing. So that's what this video is about. So this fir first part, stay tuned, and I'm going to take you right into the chicken and gravy recipe. Okay, so I'm going to tell you in the beginning that I am doing a double batch of this recipe, but the ingredients I'm showing you um, are for one um, just the single batch, which is six servings. My batch did make 12 servings. So the ingredients you're going to need are one can of um, the 98% fat-free cream of chicken soup. You're going to need two packages of chicken gravy mix. Um, the original recipe called for McCormick, but I did check the nutrition facts on this Kroger brand, and they were actually less than McCormick. You're also going to need um, some chicken breasts and the recipe calls for six boneless ch skinless chicken breasts which is what I used even for the double batch. Um, you also need two cups of water. Now the original recipe only called for pepper but I also included a couple of other things. I also added some garlic powder and some 21 seasoning salute from Trader Joe's. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put your gravy mixes and your soup along with the two cups of water and the spices in a bowl and mix it all up. Okay, once that is all mixed and nice and smooth, you will add your spices to it. And since I have yet to invest in the slow cooker um, liners, I am spraying my slow cooker with some coconut oil spray. Now you want to go ahead and add your chicken breast to the crock pot. And then go ahead and add in your mixed vegetables. After all your vegetables are in there, go ahead and just pour the gravy mix over top of the chicken and the vegetables. Now I didn't really stir this, I just kind of pushed the chicken down in there to make sure it was all covered with the gravy. Now you're going to want to cover this and cook it on low for about four hours. Now once your chicken has cooked, you're going to want to remove it from the crock pot and go ahead and shred it up. And I didn't show this part, but after you shred it up, you want to put it back into the crock pot, then your meal is done. So I get a lot of questions asking me how I measure out the servings when I make big soups and stews like this. So what I do is I'm showing you here is I just take a big bowl and I take my scale out and I do it by grams because that seems to be the easiest way to weigh and measure this type of thing. And I just measure out the entire recipe to see how much it comes to. Again, I did a double batch. So my double batch came up to 2,400 grams. Then I just split that between the number of servings which was 12 servings and then you get your how much you're going to have for each serving so in this case since I came to 2400 it's really easy to figure out so it's 200 grams per serving and you guys this is only one smart point per serving I put it in the tracker several times that's what it came up to I did not believe it when I first saw this recipe on Pinterest but it was it's only one smart point per serving so I did enjoy two servings although I could not eat it all I did end up only eating about probably two thirds of it. So I would say one and a half servings of it, which would be three smart points because it does have that magic multiplier that we all love. 
Now, I think this recipe would great be great served over mashed potatoes or brown rice or toast or, as I did, over riced cauliflower. So for those of you who don't really like the riced cauliflower very much, this is a great recipe for that because this chicken and gravy is so good and it's so much gravy on there that it really adds a lot of flavor to the cauliflower. So here it is, all plated up, and as you can see, that is two servings. It was a huge serving. Again, I only ate about two thirds of it. And do you see those little biscuits there? I'm gonna give you a little bonus recipe right now and I'm gonna show you some two ingredient biscuits. So I decided to get creative with the two ingredient dough and I decided to try to make some biscuits and see how they would turn out. Um, they turned out pretty good. Um, I would say that they were a little chewy, which I think is what you would expect from something like this. So if any of you all can perfect this a little bit more, let me know. But anyway, what I did do was I did one and a half cups of the gold medal self-rising flour and one and a half cups of plain non-fat Greek yogurt. When I put this into the recipe tracker, if I can get eight biscuits out of this, they will be two smart points a piece, which I think is great for a biscuit. So I just measured out the flour, measured out the yogurt, and mixed it all together. Then I went ahead and put that on my countertop and kneaded it together until it was in a nice soft dough. Now, because you guys know I'm all fancy like that, I used a plastic cup as a biscuit cutter because I don't own one. So you want to use something that's about three inches di diameter to be able to get eight biscuits out of this recipe. And I think I actually ended up getting nine biscuits out of this, but it was still two points a piece. So you may play around with the calculator and see what you can get. I think if you can get 12 biscuits out of this, so it'll be a little bit smaller biscuits, I think then they were one point a piece. So you want to just keep kind of flattening the dough, cutting out the biscuits, kneading the dough again until you can get all your dough is used up. Then you want to go ahead and lay them out on a cookie sheet and if you, here's a little tip if you did not know, if you put your biscuits touching then they will rise a little bit taller than if um, you separate them on the pan. So um, this little trick that um, I had somebody tell me and so it has always worked out really well for me. Then you want to go ahead and bake these at 450 degrees for about 12 to 15 minutes depending on your oven. I did check mine after 10 and they were not quite done. I ended up doing a full 15 minutes. Here are, they are right out of the oven. They were really super hot as you can see so I couldn't even open them very well because they were burning my fingers. Um, but you guys, they are really good. They're just a little bit chewy. So they're definitely not like a nice fluffy biscuit but I definitely would try them out. So there you go guys, there is um, the chicken and gravy recipe with a bonus two ingredient dough a biscuit recipe. So let me know if you try this and also stay tuned for tomorrow's video where I was showing you a part two of how to repurpose this leftovers into a yummy lunch idea. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye guys.